so much for coming to play for us this morning. We're so looking forward to some live music. <laughs> and welcome also to everybody who will be watching or listening to this service from their homes. We are well aware of you and thinking of you too. Thank you to everyone who has worked so hard to make the arrangements so that we can have this service and all we are on a different way than usual and to keep us as safe as possible. And a special mention to Margaret's very cute hand sanitizer of Spencer's of Fedora that she sourced. We hope you all appreciate it. Could we ask you please to remain seated as much as you can throughout the service with your face coverings on unless you have a medical reason that means that's difficult. Obviously children it's much more difficult, please don't stress about that, <laughs> but, but, but for grown-ups we can make sure that we, we stay seated. If you would like to contribute to our offering today, there's a plate at the door, we're not going to pass it. And if you don't want to fill an envelope, there are also slips that are with the bank details for the church so that you can make a digital transfer if you would prefer to do that in that way these days. At the end of the service, um, uh, would you please remain seated and uh, the stewards will, will exit the church pew by pew, starting from the back. The whole idea is so that we're not passing each other more than we need to. So if you wouldn't remind, it wouldn't, it wouldn't take long, if you wouldn't mind just staying seated until you're asked to leave pew by pew, and so that there's not too much of a jam at the doors. Our service next week will be online, again available on our website and our YouTube channel from Sunday morning onwards. And in this online service, we will be celebrating Holy Communion. And if you'd like to participate in that celebration as you're watching, please have some bread and wine. And the next service in the church will be a fortnight today, the 20th of September, and will be led by Janice. And finally, um, I have an intimation that there's going to be a plant sale in aid of Macmillan Nurses and Cancer Research from the 17th of September and plants will be on sale in the hub and will be replenished as they are sold. So if you go in and there's not many, don't feel that that's it, there will be more coming at them. And if anybody would like to donate plants, please contact Fiona Dalrymple who is here this morning and will wave at you all. <laughs> So please contact Fiona if you wish to contribute to the policy. Thank you. Thank you, Liz, and good morning. Good morning. I forgot how to switch on the mic. There we are. Good morning. Good morning. It really is lovely to see you all in person this morning. And may I say it's also nice to see you all a bit further forward in the church. <laughs> Jesus told his followers, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Let us worship God. While we can't sing together at the moment, we will listen to Marian play our hymn in a moment. And to help us in our reflections, I'll just read out a couple of the lyrics of the hymn, which is, Number 500, if you want to look it up at home, Lord of Creation. Lord of Creation, to you be all praise. Most mighty your working, most wondrous your ways. Your glory and power are beyond us to tell, and yet in the heart of the humble you dwell. Lord of all being, I give you my all. If I should disown you, I would stumble and fall, but sworn in your service, your work I obey, and walk in your freedom to the end of the way.
I'm glad Erwin liked it. <laughs> As we come to our time of prayer, I would invite you to join in with the words of the Lord's Prayer at the end of the prayers in a quieter way than we are used to, again to keep ourselves and each other safe. So let us pray. Loving God, we come before you today. Some of us gathered together here and some of us in our homes, all joining together in worship. We come before you today with gratitude and joy and also with a bit of apprehension and nervousness. We are glad that some of us can gather together again in person while others join us through different means. These past months have shown us that we can be your church, your people, in so many different ways, that we can connect with each other in different ways, and that we are perhaps at our best when we are helping each other, supporting one another, reaching out to one another. As we are all entering this new time, this new normal, as we are learning how to keep ourselves and each other safe, as we are grieving what has been lost and celebrate what has been gained, help us to know that you go with us, God, that you are with us every step of the way, in the joy and excitement, and also in the sadness and anxiety. Help us, we pray, to continue to walk with you, to continue to live our lives in you, to welcome all, friend and stranger, to have the courage and the hope to continue to bear witness to you in our world every day. As we now pray quietly together in the words Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now we will hear our readings, and afterwards we'll have a few moments with music for our own reflections. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Romans, chapter 13, verses 8 to 14. And if anyone has brought a Bible with them, that's on page 158 of the two Bibles. Romans chapter 13 from verse 8. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbour as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbour. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone. The day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armour of light. Let us live honourably as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarrelling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the second reading is from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 18, verses 15 to 20, and that's on page 19. 
So that's Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 to 20. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let someone want to be to you and the Gentile and the tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth, about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. God bless to us these readings of his holy word, and to his name we glory and praise. and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Isn't it nice being able to come together again in person to worship? Of course, there are perhaps fewer here than there would be usually, and things are admittedly quite a bit different from what we're used to. But some of us are back together to pray, to give thanks, to bring our worries and concerns before God, and to simply make time to think about ourselves, our lives, and where God is in them. Others are joining us on their screens or in front of their CD players. Some might join in worship while they are out in nature or involved in art or in music. These past months have shown us clearly that worshiping and worshipping together goes far beyond gathering together in a church building, nice as it is. And I am grateful for the new skills we have learned in this time and for the opportunity to embrace these different ways of connecting. We have joined together in different ways. We have gained insights that we might not have had otherwise. And many who can't often come to a service in a church building have joined in with this different way of worshipping. Of course, being Christian goes far beyond the Sunday morning. And again, this time of lockdown has given us ample opportunity to live out our ministry and reaching out to one another and supporting each other in our isolation, in our time of need. In our Gospel reading this morning, Jesus tells the disciples that where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. And that's just it. Wherever, however we are united in God's name, God is with us. It doesn't necessarily just mean times when we are gathered in person around a table, but includes so much more. Now, both our passages that the lectionary gives us today are concerned with being united in God 
and particularly with the question of how to deal with conflicts. Conflicts? Surely not. Who of us would disagree or even argue with anyone else? Alas, even in the early church, among the disciples and the people who founded the early congregations like Paul's readers in Rome, there were disagreements, as you find richly illustrated in the Bible. And since humanity hasn't changed that much in the last 2,000 years, most of us will know what it feels like to argue with others, to defend our viewpoint, to try to persuade the other to our way of seeing things and make them see that we are clearly right. And is that really the way to go? Of course, there are questions where right and wrong are clearly discernible, especially in cases where someone would be injured or damaged by one way of action. But I would suggest that in most of our arguments, the lines aren't quite so clearly drawn between right and wrong. Life is not usually black and white. There is a whole rainbow of nuance in between. I like the, su the suggestion that Jesus makes here, that if there is a disagreement, we should talk it out, and if necessary, with the help of others. Jesus is not talking about a confrontation where our opponent is basically accused, judged, and sentenced by us. He is talking about a conversation where both sides are listened to and heard. When we seek such a conversation, it can't be simply to tell the other that we think they are wrong. Instead, it is necessary that we examine our own part in the disagreement, that we make ourselves accountable to our counterpart. That's where other people might come in particularly helpful to help us to mediate. It is Paul who illustrates further just how to approach such issues with a very simple recipe that, after all, is not always that simple, by loving others. He says that all the commandments can be summarized in the one that Jesus described as the most important one. Love one another. Don't just make a show of it, but make a genuine effort to feel love, to feel compassion and charity for one another. Trying to love others, even if we don't like what they are doing, even if we profoundly disagree with them, helps us all. It allows us not to vilify our opponents, but to appreciate that they are people too, with valid viewpoints and feelings that might get hurt, just as ours. Approaching each other and even conflicts with such a mind frame also allows us to find peace in ourselves and with each other, even if we still disagree. And if we are at peace with each other, we can live according to the teachings and the example that Jesus gives us. We can live in God. And then we are truly united in the name of Jesus. And God is part of this communion. Let us close with a prayer. Compassionate God, help us to listen to those voices that do not sound like our own, to those beliefs that disagree with our own, to the pain we do not know, to the fears we do not have. Help us to listen before we speak, to understand instead of lecture, to appreciate diversity instead of condemning difference, to learn and to grow with others, not in spite of them. Help us to listen in a society of hurt, in a country of disagreement, in a world of noise. Help us to listen and give us the courage to truly hear. Amen. The next hymn we'll hear is number 517. Fight the good fight. And again, let me just read out the lyrics of the first verse. Christ is your strength. Christ is your right. Lay hold on life. And it shall be your joy.
loving God, we give you thanks and praise today and every day for the gift of community in the church and beyond, for the joy of us all coming together to listen and learn, to grow and to thrive in your love and the love of each other. We make our offering tokens of our commitment to you and to the mission and ministry of this community of your people, ever seeking to grow your kingdom. Ever present God, we thank you for allowing us to join together in different ways and yet united in our worship and in your love. Ever loving God, creator and sustainer of all that we perceive, guide us always towards peace, hope, and the promise of a new way of life in your church, a community united in love of you and each other. As our world continues to grapple with the unimaginable loss and pain experienced by hundreds of thousands of families, we pray individually and as a church for compassion and the ability to comfort, support, and empathize with all who are hurting. As our church seeks its own way forward in a changed and changing world, we pray for strength to build on what is good, to prune what is damaging, and to find new ways to unite in our mission, to spread your love to the world around us. As inequality, fear, and hate continue to plague our society, we pray for the boldness to stand up to the evils of this world, to live the new life promised and given through our Saviour Jesus, to turn from inaction to action, and to work for justice for all as one body of Christ, in the full knowledge and confidence that you are with us now and forever. Amen. Now, I promised you that the service would be shorter than usual, and so it will be. Um, our hymn to finish the service that we'll hear in a moment will be number 623, Gather Us In. And here are a couple of the lyrics. Here in this place, new light is streaming. Now as the darkness vanish away. See in this space our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of this day. Gather us in, the lost and forsaken. Gather us in, the blind and the lame. Call to us now, and we shall awaken. We shall arise at the sound of our name. Not in the dark of buildings confining, not in some heaven, light is away, but here in this place, the new light is shining. Now is the kingdom. Now is the day. Gather us in and hold us forever. Gather us in and make us your own. Gather us in, all peoples together. Fire of love in our flesh and our bones.
into this new week seeking peace in your heart. Know that God loves you and all whom you love and all with whom you struggle. May the peace of God, the love of Jesus and the presence of the Holy Spirit go with you. And the blessing of the Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>